All right. Welcome back to another No Limits video. Uh, you guys probably haven't heard from us in a while. And as you can probably tell by my background, I'm in a different building again. So I've moved a bit further away from the other boys than I was before. Um, I'm going to try and make more of an effort to put video out of what I'm actually doing. So, well, hope you enjoy. See if this helps anyone else out. Um, probably not going to this is a bit of a customized job just for my old truck but if you get some hints and tips out of it then it's all worth it so what I'm doing today is working on this big conglomeration so this let me get the clear off it this is a tow bar and rear winch frame all integrated in together for the back of my old truck that's sitting out there because <clears throat> it has neither rear winch nor tow bar so I figure this will do two birds one stone so the winch cradle I'd love to take credit for making that but I did not that to the best of my memory is from a it's either from a D40 Navara or a Ranger uh, so best of my memory it's out of an ECB bull bar and honestly if you go looking through like four drive wreckers find and I found good success with ECB bull bars that are winch compatible even if the bull bar's bent pull it off and just grab the cradle from it because they're they're nice big solid cradles so that's I've only done a couple of small modifications to it. Uh, I actually cut it off here and flattened these out so these will sit directly against the rear cross member of my chassis. So yeah, just straightened them, welded it all back on. Uh, and the tow bar, because you can't buy a tow bar for my old truck. The tow bar is PX Ford Ranger. So I just found a tow bar that was wider than my car and then I've cut the ends of it off down to the width of my car and then I'll put new end plates on it in between the winch cradle that's bolted to the rear cross member and the plates up the side and the chassis rails. This should be a pretty strong setup. So next step I can do is make a gusset from here to here just with a hole in it to put a D shackle for recovery. So that's what we're working on now. All right, this is a big gusset I made to go on here. Need somewhere to put a D-shackle. A nice, big, thick, sturdy piece of steel and I'll weld it down this edge and across here and same on the inside. Just need to make another one for this side. Right. This is two bits of steel welded together with a big ass hole drilled in it. Here's the other one, so I've cut that out. Cut that out with a plasma cutter. You could cut it out with a grinder, um, it'll do the same job. Plasma's just a little bit quicker and I got one, so I'll use it. Still needs to be all ground down. But I'll sit these things back to back. Uh, same as on the other one, I actually drilled two big 14 mil holes through here to plug weld the two plates together. And then I'll weld down this edge, down this back edge, grind them into the shape that I want and then weld along these two edges as well and grind it all smooth. And then hole saw on the drill press, put a 32mm hole straight through here and I'll be ready to weld onto this. But I'll come back when that's finished. Right, that's it all tacked in place side pieces on, I just have to drill those three holes 
Might add a fourth down here. So an extra bolt to hold my tow bar on. And that'll be four each side, and then there's four bolts going there on each side. It's marked out where I need to put my gussets. That tucks up nice and tight. Still higher than the fuel tank. Doesn't really change the departure angle that much. And yeah, I'll see a nice bit of room in here to stuff that rear winch in it. I've got to pull him off now and finish weld all these and weld the gussets in. Okay, so here's a trap. I kind of welded myself into a corner. I tacked all these on. I just went to drop this cradle out so I could finish welding it. And right there, that tab which I have full intentions of cutting off catches on the fuel tank guard. And because of the way these are, they have to go straight down. So, plasma cutter to the rescue. So, yeah, this is going to be my solution. So, I've got to cut those two tabs off in car here so I can take the tow bar off so I can weld it. Uh, it's no great loss. I had to cut those tabs off anyway. I just hadn't quite got around to it. So, that will teach me for for rushing a little bit. Anyway, we'll cut them off and weld tow bar up. Alright, there it is, back off the car. So I can weld these end plates on. And clean up here where I cut those, that extra bit off. It used to be a little bit longer than that. I'll tell you what, if you're gonna do a lot of this metal fab sort of stuff, buy a plasma cutter. That's just the, what is that, Plasma Cut 30 for Unimig. It's not dear. It's very well worth the money. Yeah, it's it's definitely worth the money, that little Plasma Cutter. I've used it a heap. Um, yeah, highly recommend it. You don't need a massive air compressor to run it either. Like, my entire air compressor He's just a good old super cheap auto. Nothing flash. It runs that plasma cutter really well. So, yeah. Not sponsored by Unimig. If they want to send me stuff, go for it. But yeah, definitely not sponsored. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing all this with the Unimig Viper 185. Like I said, the little plasma cutter, which is cut through all this. Like it was nothing. Uh, yeah, I would have had a hell of a time trying to cut this in car with a grinder. So you see, if your budget allows you, buy one. Definitely buy one. Anyway, I'll get cleaning all this up. And then I can weld it there. Same this side, weld it to the tow bar. Uh, and then, like I said, weld around here. Uh, then I've just got to do the two big gussets on the front. Yeah, finish them off. I've still got one made. So I'm just going to go finish the other one, match it to that, and then I'll. Yeah. Yeah, I've got one gusset made. I'll um, copy it, use it as a template to build the second one, so they're the same. And yeah, I'm just going to weld it onto here, and then we'll be ready to roll. Then I can mount my winch. But we'll go more into detail on that a little bit later. Alright, so today I'm going to finish off the rear winch on the back of my Jeep. So, as you can see, it's all on there. Frame's all built, it's all bolted on. Tow bar piece bolts on there. It's, as we've seen before, it's all welded together in the center. And then there's four bolts on each side and three big 12mm bolts on each side there. I've mounted the control box for the winch up here. Just zip tied these cables up out of the way for now. And they're all zip tied in across there. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to rotate that gearbox to get better access to that handle. But 
Ooh, that's bad. But what we're up to now is the most important part of fitting a winch anywhere is running a power lead from the battery at the front back to the winch. So I've decided to add a few little features whilst doing this job. Uh, so I got one of these, so it's a jump start point. So my little bracket for it here as well, which I still have to finish painting. But it's going to mount that up under the tray, which you'll see in a minute. And then I'll run a lead from the battery to the back of this, and then this to the winch. So, yeah, that way, if if the situation ever arises, which I actually have had it, where I could have used this jump start point at the back, um, it does it does open up the option of jump starting from the back of the Jeep to either jump start the Jeep or to jump start someone else without having to get up next to them uh, and work out the right side for your battery and that sort of thing. So, all right, like I said, I've bought the positive one, but I need to, I wasn't gonna, oh, search eBay, these things aren't too dear. Uh, I got one through Napa and I think they're about 50 bucks each. But I figured I only needed the insulated one for the positive cable. So I'm going to build my own to do the negative side. Because it doesn't need to be insulated. So we'll get stuck into building the other half of this. Alright, so this is what we're using to make the earth point for the jump start kit. Using this bit of tube, which was the other half of this. And it's just honestly a bit of pipe, something for the, the jump your jumper cables just to grip onto. Uh, ordinary old 10 mil bolt from Bunnings, zinc coated. Ground the zinc off it there, which doesn't take much. It's not much of a coating. He'll go on there, weld it around the top. I'm going to put a nut, a nut just there. that onto the bottom side see if I can start that with one hand just like that so the whole up go like that and I'll center that up weld around the top of it uh, toss nut I think I'm just gonna weld a couple sides of this nut so you can still put a spanner on at least two sides just to hold it and then it'll go onto a bracket with another nut on the back side holding all the earth leads and then I'm going to mount that under the back of the Jeep not too far from this one so we'll get stuck into it right there's my stud all made we said just weld that bolt in there well, the nut on here, a way that I can still put a spanner on it to hold it, so I can tighten him up. Uh, and he'll get, obviously, spring washer and a nut. With another nut to hold all the wires on. And I'll show you how this is going to mount on the car. So we come out here. Trying to stay out of the sun, it's a bit warm today. So I've made this nice little bracket, which is just put some paint on it. Enough to handle. And it is going under here, so that's where the positive's going to go. The negative's going to go down here on the chassis. Utilize this hole here. I can put a nut on a wire through that hole, so it will be like that as a negative. You put your negative on for jump starting, and that'll use. And then this will be the positive, which is a nice red cap. That's a positive lead for my winch. And then I'm going to run a battery, a lead from here to the battery. And the same with this one, it'll have a lead, which is the lead that's hanging down the ground here for the winch. And then a lead from here to the battery as well. Right. 
Yeah, still got these brackets made up. I just drilled and tapped the actual tray. It's quite thick, so we can get away with that. And then we're gonna start making battery leads. For the battery lead, this is what I have, which is starter cable. It's two BNS. Uh, it says 190 amps. That 190 constant amps, so that will be sufficient for that winch. So it's quite a. I mean, that's the same sort of cable that comes with the winch from Tim, actually. So yeah, picked up a whole roll of it. Uh, I've got a couple of things. Like I've got to do this job and then I'll, I'll end up having to do new starter cables for this Jeep as well. So I figured I might as well buy a roll of it and then I've got it. Uh, you can buy it by the meter. Just work out what you need. and Put an extra meter. So realistically I only needed to buy uh, I'd be 12, 13 meters to do both cables. I didn't need a 30 metre roll, but like I said, I'll have wire left over for other jobs. All right, now that we've worked out the location of where those two jump start points are gonna be, start making up our leads. These are pretty simple. Uh, yeah, so we're just gonna strip back this insulation to about there for the cable lug. We're gonna do that with just an ordinary old Stanley knife right through there To get right around it, just a tiny little bit there. There he is. Push him on like that, and I'm going to heat it and run solder in the back side of it so this is soldered on. There is a big crimping tool you can get for crimping these on, which I don't have, so. I'm going to solder it on and it'll be fine, it will not fail. Uh, I will actually show you on how I'm going to do that. Probably noticed I've skipped over a lot of the welding, grinding sort of portions of these videos. It just makes the video really long and everyone's seen someone weld and grind something so you're not learning anything from it. I can guarantee the way I'm doing it is probably not the right way to do it. So. I won't show you my bad habits, but I will show you how to make a battery cable so that you can do this on your vehicle if, yeah, if you decide to mount a winch at the back or even relocate your batteries to the back. I mean, the same principle can be used for anything. It doesn't have to be a four-wheel drive. If you're building a race car, you'll need to make battery cables. So. Uh, my cable lugs, I did pick up this little kit. I uh, think it was just Autobahn. I think, I don't remember. Yeah, a little kit. Just an assortment of little battery lugs without going to like a massive kit of them. And this will do everything I need to do for this particular job. And then the great thing with these little kits that's going to give you a good starting point and then yeah, I'm going to use a couple of these so now I know that I need to go and buy some more of these and I can just buy another two or four depending on what I use and put them back in here and my kit's full again and it doesn't matter what size wire I'm using I should have a lug that'll do the job so this is a good yeah, good general kit and it's going to get you most of your little jobs sorted out if you don't get into the wiring side of it whether it be dual batteries or like I said mounting winches uh, even just running power outlets like 12 volt outlets in the back of your car 
you can either yeah, use those which take a small wire and connect straight onto an eyelet. They're just a bit nicer than the crimpons. Or I found to use several, like earth wires, you use several smaller wires into one big lug. And then you heat shrink it and conduit it and it looks like one big cable. It just gives you a nice finish. Anyway, we'll get this, this lug on and we'll go from there. This. That's the part we were hoping to see. It tells me that it's full. That's what we were hoping to see. Just started having solder come out the bottom of that. It tells me that solder joint is all full. It does melt the outer casing a little bit, but that won't bother it. We'll heat shrink over it and it'll be fine. Put on this bit of heat shrink. And that's our main cable for the winch all done. I had to turn my radio off so I could keep talking to you. But copyright infringements. Bit of hunters, hunters and collectors going on. Anyway, well, that's her done. I had just enough, just enough conduit to do the job. So just enough conduit to do the job. Uh, so the earth lead's not getting conduited, obviously. It'll get. I'll put a heat shrink on the end of it, but no conduit. And really, if it rubs through, you just get more earth. So it doesn't. I don't believe it needs it. Um, for the extra cost, it looks neat, but yeah, there's a fair bit extra cost in it. And I don't have it, so I want to get this project finished today, which is the big thing. Because I'm not saying I'm going to need it, but I'll go out again next weekend, and it'll be. It'd be nice to have that option there for that rear winch. So we'll get this fitted up in the car. All right, and there we go. It's our finished product. It's our earth, bolts directly to the chassis, and then our fit comes the earth lead that goes to the main battery and the earth lead for the winch. Up here is our positive for jump starting another vehicle. Um, and to be honest, even running the winch on my trailer, I've got a, my trailer's got a winch on it as well, which doesn't have its own battery to run it. I can just put jumper leads, run it to here. Control box for the rear winch, all mounted up. Let's lead. And then I just ran the, ran the power leads along here. So tucked in nice and tight with all the other lines. 
here's the last part of it. So, it must be gone off switch, isolated under the bonnet. Just so that power lead is dead most of the time until I actually need it. So switch that on, winch works, switch it off, winch doesn't. Yeah, it's a lovely TJ and Brandon one which actually came with this winch, the front winch. But with the power lead going from there to there, there was no real room to put an isolator in it or point. So yeah, that's it. Later down the track I will move We'll move the switches onto the dash so we can control it in the car. But for now, that's that job done. Tow bar's all on and wired and works. Uh, literally, the next thing is to get this thing out and use it, and we'll hopefully not use that winch because if I'm using that rear winch, then somewhere I probably shouldn't have driven to start with. But anyway, if I need it, I got it. So we'll see you in the next video.